How's it going guys? Judas here bringing you another build video. This is the Merkwire patch, the PvP update for my Stamina Templar solo 1vx outnumbered build. Merkmire is here, jabs are fixed, and Stamplar's doing pretty good. Well, actually, it's doing better than pretty good. It's, it's, it's in a really, really good spot right now. I've always loved Stamplar. They've always been a good, good class, but right now, they're, they're doing really, really well. The buffs that they've seen in this patch are really, really good in terms of what I'm achieving open world, what I'm achieving solo, outnumbered with the Stamplar. So, yeah, Merkmire patch, I bring you my Stamina Templar, The Ascended. The build video will be rather lengthy, but for those people that want the short version of the build, I'll put some timestamps below in the comments when I get a chance. You'll be able to skip through to the sets, to the basic things that you need. Um, if you're new to Stamplar and you want to learn a few things, stick around, watch the full video, and I'll, I'll justify the things that I'm using. I'll sort of try to explain as much as possible about the build to improve your overall gameplay. So yeah, let's get into the build. I suppose that we'll start off with... Uh, with a little discussion about the sets that I'm running, sort of in relation to the patch, to the Merkmire patch. This patch, I am not running any sustained sets in terms of stamina recovery. The sets I run, it's double damage sets, well, really, if you count the Master's Bow, triple damage sets, and obviously, Troll King for the healing. The setup of this is 2H and Bow. It is 5 heavy, 1 medium, 1 light to access the Undaunted to access the max stat we, max stats we can in terms of our try stats and overall it performs so so well um, solo open world I'm not saying you're, gonna, you're going to get on this and destroy everyone anyone can beat anyone in this game but this setup is designed to take damage to counter to release damage back and to take on solo to take on players while playing solo while 1vxing it's, it's, some people say it's a thing of the past but on certain builds certain setups it can be done the reason why I don't run a medium build, and I've made videos on this in the past, one mistake in medium when you're outnumbered and you're gone. One or two ultimate dumps in medium and you know, you're gone, you're, you're having it, there's there's not much you can do. But in terms of the options that you get in heavy and the tank ability that you get in heavy, even when it lags in medium, you know, you, you can become unstuck a little bit and sort of, you, you, the odds are stacked against you. Heavy armor works really well, so yeah, 5 one, one setup, 5 heavy, 1 medium, 1 light, running the 2 HM bow. Let's get into the sets. So, the first set that I want to talk about, the Spriggan set. Really, really nice set in terms of the damage that we're getting, the max stamina. I go for a sword, 2 H, disease enchant on here, and I like it neuron. I like it neuron because of the other sets that I'm using in terms of the damage that I'm up in. So we get 2 piece max stam, 3 piece max stam, 4 piece weapon damage, 5 piece physical pen. We don't need this on the bow bar, on the back bar, so this is really, really nice to run as a split build. So we have this active on the 2H, and we also have this active on the jewellery. I'll skip down to the jewellery now, so you can see. So we run a try, try and chat, sorry, try on this for the uh, for the try stats. You could you could easily put this on armour instead of instead of the jewellery piece. I just was testing out different things, wanted to try that. So we go try weapon damage. Here we just go standard robust with one stamina recovery. And here we go standard robust with weapon damage. And as I've said, the Spriggans is only active on the 2H bar. The next set that we incorporate are second damage sets. So we've got Spriggans as our damage set and then Fury as our damage set. We're on this setup on um, on the rest of the pieces. We've got the chest, waist, hands, legs and feet. All in pen, um, all max stam, except I think, yeah, we're going to try and chant on the chest. Now Fury is really, really nice. It's the reason why I run Sword for the extra damage and Neuron for the extra damage. I also know Infused is doing pretty good this patch as well. But you get the health, the health we're stacking in from the Undaunted anyway. We get the max down, we get the flat weapon damage, then we get when we take critical damage, your weapon damage is increased. On a Stamplar that's tanky and can move, with the bow we get good mobility. On a Stamplar set up like this, you're in a really, really good situation in terms of getting that Fury built up. You can take the damage, you can take the dots, and when it's too much you can cleanse it off, but you've got your Fury built up. So it's a really, really nice set overall. Um, don't worry about sus about sustain, I'll go through some ways you can sustain, but Stamplar sustain this patch is sorted, trust me. Um, Troll King. 
nothing other than heels. It's really nice to get heels that sort of they cover yourself. A rally can tick when you drop below 50% and you don't need to waste any more stam. This will activate trolking and you've got some good healing. You can be lazy with your vigors. I don't mean lazy as in forgetting to, forgetting to apply them, but you cannot apply them and trolking can look after you when you're under a lot of pressure. You've got different sources of healing. So, so trolking TK is just a really, really nice healing set. Obviously we're running pen on uh, in, in pen on both pieces. We have the head as medium and the shoulder as light. If you wanted to really min-max this build, you could easily, easily change it up where you incorporate maybe, I think, a Fury piece onto the ring, and then that would allow one of the smaller pieces to become to become medium. Um, it's up to you, but this, this way works pretty well. Um, so yeah, the try and chant on one piece, two piece, and then on one of the rings as well, but it's up to you how you set that up. It's, it doesn't make much difference at all. The rest you want to go max stam, you want to go in pen. And then the back bar weapon, good old master's bow. I absolutely love this bow in terms of the play style. It reminds me of the um, the Orns of the Reach stam sock that I released. It's a really, really, really solid game sort of play style. The master's bow, if you're not sure on this, it drops from Vet Dragon Star Arena. Get your bros, get some, get a team together, get grinding it out. Master axes, sort of master dual wield is also a good option here. But I love the bow, I love the poison inject to take the damage you get from it. So this two piece set active on the back bar increases your weapon damage by 301 against targets affected by your poison arrow. So in a basic sense, all that means is that we have to just put on the poison inject. When the poison inject's on and it's ticking, we swap bar, we get the increased damage only on target. Now, you've got to remember that's only on the target, so the guy that you've got the poison inject on is the guy that you want to be aiming down, which you would do anyway. So just don't forget that. It's not increasing your damage overall, it's increasing your damage on that target. And we add the increased weapon damage enchant on this as well for 5 seconds, because obviously we wouldn't just poison inject, we would weave it in with a heavy attack poison inject or a light attack poison inject. So we've got the 301 for 9 seconds, I think 10 seconds maybe the poison inject lasts, and then the 348 we get that for 5 seconds. And it's really really in simple in terms of setting up your damage, if you've got time you can go light into the heavy attack, sorry, the heavy attack into the poison inject, or you can go light poison, both hit at the same time. It's entirely up to you how you want to set it up, but it's just a really really nice way to set up first, and that's, that's the way I like to play this build. So I think that covers the sets. In terms of the rest of the build setup, let's get into it real quick. The boon that we run, obviously we've run in, we are running two damage sets, so we run we run the serpent for a nice chunk of stam recovery. Um, it really really helps out. Werewolf is op werewolf is optional, but I like werewolf in terms of the passive um, regeneration that you get from your stam regen. I have that back bad. I don't see any point in running the uh, the, the sort of templar healing healing ultimate. It, it can be useful, but most of the time I'd rather just have the extra sustain than go back on the offensive. And the food that we're running, we're running the um, the RTM Takeaway Broth. It's been clarified this patch that this, or maybe it was last patch, that this is not considered a drink so it won't work with Bone Pirate so there is no point <coughs> excuse me, in setting this up sort of with a Bone Pirate build. But what we get from this, we get, ma this has been fixed, this used to say stuff about magic. But we get the max health, we get the health recovery, which is nice with Troll King and our race. I'll explain that shortly. And we get the max stam. And we get another chunk of stam recovery, and it's expensive, and it's about to run out. But if you, if you want to run this build, this is the food you need. It can be expensive, but when I'm playing Popper Food, you get two hours of solid PvP. You know, that's more than enough for me. I don't play for very much in terms of grinding it out anymore. I just hop on, whack the best food on it, and away you go. But yeah, we run, we run this food, it was really, really nice for the synergies that I've talked about. Um, in terms of our race, I like Orc, I'm still an Orc on this build. Nord works really well in terms of the uh, the damage mitigation that you can get. But if we just go to the uh, to the Orc skill passives real quick. Let's see, we get, the, we get the max health and the max stamina, 6%. That's really, really nice. You need stamina for your damage and sustain. You need health to survive. So I like the balance that you get between those two at 6%, especially when we've got access to the Undaunted and we're rocking the tri, the Triglyphs and the tri on the Jewelry. Unflinching, um, healing received, flat increase by 5% and a flat increase to health recovery by 20%. So this is really, really nice, coupled with 
um, the Arteum takeaway broth food really really nice in terms of the increased healing that we can get from troll kick from this and last but not least the swift warrior flat damage increase on melee attacks by four percent that's more or less most of the damage that we're putting out with this build and then we get a reduced cost of sprint by 12 percent really really nice value and increased movement speed bonus of sprint by 10 percent so even though we are um an heavy armor build in terms of the, the build the speed that why is my rally not working okay that, that doesn't want to work can't even change bar it would happen on a build video i swear to god i'm pressing everything i can let's smash this guy i think i've lagged i have definitely lagged i'm gonna get kicked for bone mashing any second now so yeah i'll be back in one second okay sorry about that guys we are back um I, my internet was very stable so i i think it was literally just um the fact that the servers on the servers that eso have sort of the best servers ever there's never any problems with them you know i'm doing something as simple as explaining my build then all of a sudden my buttons freeze it's a really good job that that actually doesn't happen in pv in pvp and the game runs smooth um, so yeah, let's let's carry on with this. I was talking about the uh, the orc passives and what do what did I mention? I was mentioning the uh, yeah the speed the speed that we can get from the passives. So if you think about this, twelve percent reduced cost of sprint. When you're playing outnumbered, you want to be running around line of sight. You want to get to line of sight. This is going to be one of the things that saves you. Not the fact that you can kill someone before they can kill you, because most of the time that doesn't happen anyway this is a kicker for me this is really really good and the flat movement speed of 10 percent works really really good with bow from bow with the from bow we get our main source of major expedition just look at the bow passives hasty retreat four seconds so it could be better but four seconds off the cost of a dodge roll for major expedition when stacked with the other things is really really nice and yes we are in every build but we can still dodge roll and we can still reach some good speeds in terms of accessing line of sight and preparing to engage, preparing to disengage and obviously just make sure you're not spamming dodge roll you won't be able to dodge roll, dodge roll again I mean it looks like a can but you'll waste stam so watch, watch for the little little green immunity you can see there on my feet watch for that to drop and then you can easily just dodge roll again at a reduced cost where it's not really affecting your stamina recovery too much so I've talked about these sets, talked about the boon, talked about the food, talked about the race. Why not? Let's go into the skills. So we'll start on the uh, on the back bar, on the buff bar. This bar you won't be on too much. You can stay on it because you've got defending on it as a trait. Um, I did say you could also run um, infused if you wanted to up that weapon damage, but I like defending because when you're on this when you're on this back bar. You've sort, you're sort of setting up burst, you you don't want to be caught off guard, most of the time you'll be dodge rolling, you'll be healing. Dodge roll is really, really unreliable this patch, I can't stand medium, I can't stand dodge roll other than to dodge the blades into attacks and to get a bit of speed, it's not very reli reliable at all. That's just my opinion, that's just my experience, other people might be able to do it, this patch, heavy is the way for me. So the defending bow works really, really well, uh, so let's go through this bar. This is the, the skill for Stampler, this batch. The cost is 865. 865 stamina. Let's see what we get. We get the resistances lasting for 20 seconds. The duration right there is 20 seconds. And we also, whoops, we also get recovery. 240 stamina every second. I, I've not done the maths. I, I don't know what this relates to, but in terms of the, you can feel this this patch you can feel this the resist the resistances are great but this is even better it's great because it's another source of recovery as well it's not something that's going on to tooltips it's a different source of recovery it's sort of like like having our own little netch relating it to the warden such a such a great move love this this is this is what allows me to run two damage sets this patch restoring focus i won't go into into passives and skill points it's pretty obvious you, you know where to put them I'm using 2H, put them in there, I'm using Bow, I'm using Fighter's Guild, you know, simple things, I'm not going to waste time and go through that. The second skill on the back bar, Repentance. I love this skill. It, it's more of, I don't know, like when, you, when you're fighting outnumbered, 
three four guys and you kill the first one and you get the repentance off them it's just nice I love a, a dodge roll repentance sucking the souls repenting the souls ready to kill the next one that's great in terms of the heal we get from it it's a moderate heal the stamina is not very much at all um, but it's useful it's useful in IC in terms of when the fact that when there's bodies everywhere it's useful on guards and any NPCs that have died and obviously this patch the major change we are no longer arguing Stamplar users we can have 10 Stamplars and it'll be like a repentance orgy you know there's no arguing everyone's having a repent from a soul it's as simple as that from a corpse I don't know why I called it a soul so yeah um, but the kicker for this is the fact that while it's slotted we gain minor, fort minor fortitude minor endurance and minor intellect so we get a flat increase on health recovery yet again I've talked about that we're stacking into that before 10% flat, in flat increase on the stamina regen and the magicka regen so overall it's a really really useful move some people have this front bar I'm stacking into my recoveries more on the back bar that's why I have it there the next skill our cleanse extended ritual quite a big magic cost but in terms of this now being a stamina morph the only thing that we'll be using our magicka for is the extended ritual and this is it just makes stampla so so strong in terms of one button pressed you know the snares have gone the, the immobilizers have gone the dots have gone sometimes if you've got a lot a lot on you you might need to dodge roll to break the root first then cleanse it's entirely up to you but this is what keeps tampla sorry stamplar tanky in my opinion it's great on a magplar but it's even better on a stamplar you know you've got that movement it, it makes me feel so strong it's a really really nice move uh, poison inject we've talked about this obviously we need to run this to proc the master's bow um, it works really really well just on the back bar proc it switch and it's a hefty dot as well if you think about the first rotation that I'm going to explain and the fact that you can use movement to get to line of sight you can be around line of sight and you can be picking which target you want to engage with as they run, run towards you you can sort of be testing the resistances you can get a light attack poison inject sometimes take a good quarter a good half of people's health off and you know those are the guys you want to be targeting you're getting a feel for them that's why i like bow and obviously vigor vigor's looking really really low but obviously it's not our our main source of healing um, we get the trolking heals as well and this will go up all of these tooltips damage wise will go up with fury when it's fully procced which most of the time it gets to full and we get the full damage bonus from it so later on i'll attach some sort of clips i'm going to talk around to show how the fury is fully buffed and we'll also look at the tooltips and sort of the vigor tooltips when we've got fury up because we will be using this open world app numbered and most of the time the fury will be up obviously initially you'll have to sort of sort of tank sort of tank and take some damage but i wouldn't play it like you're waiting for fury just look at fury keep an eye on your buff tracker you can time your burst when it's up but the burst even without the fury up anyway i've dropped guys i've hit 14k dawnbreakers 15k dawnbreakers with fury full i've hit them sort of similar to that maybe 10 12ks without fury full so it's not a big deal the last move i want to talk about on the back bar the werewolf transformation you know any morph for this will work it's just the fact that while slotted we get 15 percent stamina increase as i've said we run two damage sets all these little pieces of sources of stamina from the rune from the one piece on the ring that is what helps us sustain so yeah that's the back bar covered let's go on to the front bar the damage bar i really really like this setup in terms of what you can achieve from it open world the first move i want to talk about trap beast i love this thing it's such such a good move to use not many people expect it and you sort of you can put it and set it up on line of sight so you can set up a choke really really easy in terms of sort of moving around the cancel on it is so simple you know you little block cancel and it's down it's active you can run over it you know people will come onto it you can poison inject move back on you can roll back it will rearm it'll set itself you can also cancel it with a dodge roll really easy as we can see it's just moved and it's set up there you know people aren't seeing this and the range like if i put it on this guy here if i get it so it's not on him but it's like fairly close fairly close to him we can see it activates so they don't have to necessarily run all the way over it they can just run close to it and it's doing the job 
magplas will become unstuck at this certain certain classes that aren't sure what to do how to break it whether to roll it's a good way to waste stamina the second reason why i like it is of the damage increase if we look passively at our fighters guild uh where is it yeah increase your weapon damage by three percent for each fighters guild ability slotted we have this and we also have dawnbreaker so that's a six percent increase that 6% increase is only moderate, but when you think about Fury being up full time, I think this equates to something like 90 to 100 damage on top, which stacks, which is really, really nice overall. So that's why I like Trap Beast there. It is a flex spot, so I mean, if there's another move that you prefer, and you know, I can't think of the top of my head. Some Sigic skills might be useful there, but. In terms of what you can achieve from that, I like to have, lots of them are based around Magicka, and I like to have my Magicka purely for my emergency button, for my cleanse button, so that's why I like to just run the beast there. The next skill, Power of the Light, this is a great move in terms of st in terms of Stamplar Burst. So the maximum copy damage on this is quite low, 21k, that's because it, st it stacks up our max stam, and our max stam is moderate, you know, it's 35k. I've seen Stamplars, stamp, I've run Stamplars as low as 30k, I've run Stamplars as low as, as high as 40k. For me, for this being, being 21, 20, 21k, it's not a problem, it's still a good source of burst. So obviously, you get the damage copied for 6 seconds, 20% is released as additional damage. It doesn't take long to put in max into an opponent in terms of the dots and the pressures that you're applying. And it's also really nice to get that minor fracture in terms of the extra damage that we'll get from our penetration from our Spriggans and from this, the way they stack, that's going to be really, really nice. So it's, it's a nice way to get that major fracture, minor fracture, sorry, in, in terms of upping the damage. Uh, next we'll talk about main bread and butter DPS jabs. So just buffed with a rally. These are 3-7. Such a, such a high tooltip. They get even higher when we consider Fury especially for heavy. I know you can get these higher and hitting harder with different setups in, setups in medium, but for everything else that we get, this is a really, really nice tooltip. The final strike reduces the movement speed by 70%. It's barely noticeable, you know, it's for two seconds, but the kicker for me is the major savagery. I've not talked about stat sheet yet. I'll go through that later. Um, probably should have done it before, so you can decide whether the, these are the stats that you want to play. But the critical rating that we get from this, we don't have to run pots for this. Most of the time we'll be jabbing. It's pretty nice. Um, in terms of our jabs, just make sure that, you, that you're weaving them. I, they were broken for a while where I was trying to spin to win. I was looking at lots of different setups. But if you've got time, you can go into the heavy jab rotation. And you just want to light in between each. And you can get the timing down. It's really, really simple. You can wind the heavy back up. But the light for me is the way to go in terms of weaving and obviously when we're weaving in that we've got a chance to proc um, not from the jabs, the jabs won't proc the disease and jam but our light attack, our heavy attacks they've got a good chance of proccing that so back to the skills, talked about jabs I'll go through the burst rotation at the end of the video or maybe we'll talk about I'll look at a gameplay guide, I'll show some clips that I've got previously our CC, binding javelin for me javelin's the way to go this patch I'd, I preferred the knockback purely because the knockback would cause for a, you know what I mean, a buggy CC, a CC that's like, hell I can't break this, why, well, still why can't I break this, and I'd just be going crazy, you know, jabbing over the top of them, but for now it's just a knockdown, alright, but the reason why I like it, it's very accurate. Some people are spamming dodge rolls, you'll find this hard to land it on them, you'd be better off just going for the Dawnbreaker. But most of the time you can get this um, on opponents really, really easy. It's a reliable CC. Depending on your setup, I have in the past run um, Dizzy Swing for RCC, but you know movement speed's been dropped, so people are slower, but you're also slower. And it's nice just to have that burst that's precise. So when the power of the light is just about to pop, you know, I can either Dawnbreaker or I can CC, uh, I can CC them with Javelin and go into the jabs. And it cancels really nice, you know, you can bar swap it, you can block cancel it, just twitching out of my arm there. It's a really, really nice move to have. 
Um, and then last but not least, and the tooltip's not bad on it. You know, you'd you would get you would get a much much higher tooltip with Dizzy. You know, Zuffy just buffed off the rallies 15. That's I suppose it's not really high for a Dizzy, but in, in comparison to the Javelin, it's it's double. But it's more of a reliable CC that you want this patch. So last move, sorry, second to last, we'll talk about the ultimate rally. The reason why I run rally over forward. Forward's received a nerf this patch. Even though we've got Troll King and we've got um, lots of big eels from Vigor, from Troll King, it's really, really nice when you're playing solo, open world, outnumbered. Just to have that, holy crap, I need to, a burst eel from Rally. And it's nice that when it's ticking, as I've said previously, you get the health ticks every two seconds. So if this, is, this ticks when you're below 50%, it will activate Troll King. So it's really, really nice heal over time source of our weapon damage increase our major brutality if you would like to run forward momentum be my guest do that but I, I prefer just using the cleanse um sort of for the roots for the snares for the immobilizers and rally still for the burst deal whoops okay so uh last skill sorry i love the shop here dawnbreaker this is nice 15k 15k physical damage as I'm, as I'm showing you this, this is just flat. This is just flat from a flat damage. No fury fully buffed here, and obviously we're not getting, we're not taking into the account the penetration from the Spriggans. But a really, really nice strong hit with a CC. This cancels so, so hard. You saw that I cancel it there with a the dodge roll. It's a really, really easy block cancel to do. Most of the time you're going to be landing them. And when you land it, the, the hit's big. This thing crits so high when fury is fully up with the penetration from Spriggans. It just hits so damn hard. But if you don't get the burst, you can follow up knowing that they've got a nasty dot ticking on them. They'll probably still have the poison inject, depending on what type, depending on when you did it. I don't know, maybe they're in your trap beast. They're going to be dotted up, they're going to be taking it. So even if you don't get the burst with this, still just follow through with the jabs. You don't need an execute on this build. Follow through with the jabs, and eventually they'll drop. So that is basically the skill setup. So these are the back bar stats, you can pause them if you want to have a greater look. But this is back bar with rally, this is front bar with rally, and then you can see on the next one that's coming right now, we've got the fury full with the back bar, and then the next one coming, fury full on the front bar. So the fury gets up really really quick and it gives some really really nice damage. Then we've got the full dawn rig tooltip, 18.2k, hits really hard, crits really hard, Spriggans makes it hits hard as well. Got the jabs at 4.6 when Fury's up full, looking really, really strong. Poison Inject, 7.3, 14k dot over 10 seconds. Think about the Vigors, yeah, the Vigors, the 17k Vigors, as well as the other healing that we get from TK. We've got 21 on Fury, hitting 14.5 Dawny, 15.6 Dawny right there. And then we've got a 14.1 Dawny and a 10 Dawny with no Fury, just with weapon damage enchant procced. So, uh, some pretty good stats right there. So this little clip is just a a 1vx that I pulled with the build. I'm sort of enticing the guys to come. They're not really interested, but eventually they come and I have to change line of sights. I'm trying to set up here um, just to tease a few of them out, but in a moment you'll see they come and this tree is not good enough. I need something with gaps, something with rocks, something I can jump in between. So yeah, I'm just using the bow just to tease them out, just to get a real bit of a feel for who's coming. And then three come and three more come. So immediately I need to dodge roll, use the bow speed, get to line of sight. I managed to do that, which staggers them. So they're going to be coming much slower. Some of them might be out of stamina. I set up the trap beast and I'm just waiting, biding my time. I think the CP, the lowest CP comes around real quick, so get a poison inject into him. Try and go for a CC, finish with the Dawny. The dots are ticking, I can roll and line of sight, and I get that kill. So I run out, let them know I'm coming, a little repent, just assess the situation. Got a Nightblade coming in with a with a dizzy right there, so he's hitting quite hard. I need to immediately use the javelin to stop that CC. Then I'm kiting. This is where the heals come in. So Fury's at 19, so I'm getting good heals from Fury, good heals from TK. I managed to get to line of sight pretty quick. Now I know these guys aren't coordinated, so I can go back on myself. This guy's separated, 8, 10 degrees away. Easy with the Dawnbreaker, power of the light, straight over, another kill in the same spot, repent back on it so we've got a couple more guys now still a little bit of pressure got a warden sort of giving me some snares i just need to keep moving around 
If I make my way around here quickly enough, I can get a bit of a gap, get a bit of a reprieve from the damage they're giving me. This Titan, Titan loves the beast. It, literally, the trap beast is made for Titan. The blade keeps cloaking. I, really, I should prioritise the blade, but he's cloaking in and out all the time. So next up, I'm going for the Warden. Bad Dawnbreaker here. He sort of steps through me, which is a bit of a waste. But I can kite on this tree. I, I need to be aware just of the other guy to the left on the Nightblade. I make a bit of room by running through here. As we can see, they don't follow. They don't know if I go right or left. I managed to pull left and the guy's isolated on himself, which is what I want. So a nice poison inject, power of the lie, cancel, a few jabs. I can roll out of the snares and things and I know he's going to pop. Cheeky repent off him and we're good to go again. And it's just Titan on the Nightblade. I'm aware of the Nightblade, but he's, he's sort of been a bit of a coward. He's been dipping in and out all fight. He's back now. He's, uh, he's, his odds don't look great, to be fair. So I just take the tree for the line sight. Try to get them both with the Dawnbreaker. It doesn't quite pay off. Should have put a bit more pressure on, but the, uh, the Nightblade manages to cloak out. The uh, the warden is on it again. He's not killed me before, so he find the, finds the beast again. This 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 guy loves the beast, but yeah, just a little bit of pressure. I should jab him. I mean, my rally's dropped here, but the da the damage is just enough. Um, the night blade makes his way out of there. He gives me a few couple of poison injects in the back, but you know, I, I consider that I consider that a good X. He's gone. There's uh, there's no way he's coming back to fight the one we want. So I hope that clip was useful, and uh, I hope it illustrated some of the things the build can do. Okay, and last we'll just quickly go through CP. 